on bus number 15, so Teresa Paul is on the bus with us. And we are at Zanesville, but we're waiting for our turn to get off the bus and go on the tour. So I think there's one more bus in front we're of us. We're almost there. We've got one more bus ahead of us. So it should just be a couple minutes. Woo! -hoo -hoo! <laughs> 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 yeah, hey. <laughs> Morning. Morning. What's your stuff coming up? Welcome. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome. Good morning, good morning. All right, good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining Avon Zanesville Distribution. We are so glad to have you here. Um, so, if you weren't here, this facility wouldn't exist. My 400 fantastic associates, some of which are behind me, wouldn't be here without you. So you're the reason that we're here, so thank you for joining us today. So my name is Eric Lee, and I'm the site director. I have been with Avon for about 10 years, and I helped open the facility. So I started in the receiving and warehouse, then I moved to order fulfillment and big pack and ship operation, and I've been the site director now for about five years. So a little bit about the facility. So we shipped our first order out of this facility on March 5th, 2009. So a little over nine years ago. The facility is 800,000 square foot of processing area. So what does that mean? Put it into perspective, from goalpost to goalpost, you can fit over 14 football fields in this facility to process orders. We also have five miles of conveyor so that we can process your order from beginning all the way to end in the shipping dock. So with that, we can process in one day 2.8 million pieces. So 2.8 million pieces in one single day. The facility was also designed to be green, a green facility. So we were one of the first 10 lead gold distribution facilities in the, in the country. So what does LEED stand for? It stands for Leadership in Energy and Environmental Design. So we have energy efficient motors. So when the cartons aren't sitting there, the motors will shut off by themselves. We have energy efficient lighting. So there's LED lighting above your head. We also have other energy efficient lighting. We also have uh, we collect snow and rain melt off the roof. When you leave, you'll see a 2,500 gallon tank. And we use that to flush the lavatories up front. So we reuse, use brown water to flush the lavatories. And here is Joe Trotto and order start. Hey, welcome. Welcome to Zane's. A little bit about myself. I've been with Avon for 11 years. I'm currently the fulfillment manager here in Zanesville. I started at the Newark Delaware facility as a warehouse supervisor. Transitioned here about 10 years ago. And I've had a variety of different roles here within the branch. So behind me is the order start. This is where we receive your order, we wave or process your order, get it ready to re release to get picked, and then it goes on the floor in the carton and gets picked on the floor. So let's dig into what actually happens behind me. So it all starts when you place your campaign order. It's sent down to us electronically. It comes into what we call our WMR, our warehouse management. From that point on, the system makes all the decisions for us. How many cartons you want to use? What size cartons you want to use? It picks the most efficient path for us to pick your order based on what you ordered. So it takes a look at what you ordered, it looks at the size, the number of pieces, the weight, the volume, and evenly distributes it amongst the cartons to best fit the carton sizes and the path throughout the building. So it all starts, the order goes down, and the print room will wave it. And you'll get, for those of you that are Zanesville representatives, you'll get your, your invoice, your package, and in your order. That comes out on paper to the operators behind you. They'll then launch that on one of five lines behind you that produce before we get the boxes that we ship your order in. We currently have nine different size cartons in Zanesville, five of which come off the lines behind me. The other five are special handling and special ordering and uh, small orders in our Avon.com base. We also have three different colored totes that are for special handling and Avon.com that ride the lines and go up to a special uh, packaging area. So print room waves your order, comes down to the floor. If you've ever looked at your invoice, Top left hand corner, it tells you the first carton size for your order. The operator behind you will take that, make sure it's on the right line, and place your invoice barcode up in the middle of the carton. Car then they'll release it. They'll go under one of these overhead scanners and scan that barcode. That'll assign what we call a routing label to it. You'll hear a lot more about that as you go through the rest of your door. And what this does, it allows us to track that carton from the second it gets the label to the second it gets the truck. So at any point in the time of day, we know where this carton is at. So the question we always get asked is why is my invoice always on the bottom of the box? Now you see why. We can't start picking the order or start processing it until we scan it, and we have to have it on the bottom to scan it. So the next stop on your tour will be the warehouse with this Ford Rush. Take as many pictures as you want. I will give you a hint though. 
taking a picture down the aisle will probably be your best, just so you know. It looks pretty amazing if you take a picture down the aisle. So like aisle K right here, that's a good one to take a picture down. Now it is a little bit warmer in here, and the reason for that is because the warehouse has a firewall, and the concrete acts as a, as a large barrier to the air conditioning. All right, so I have a question for everyone. Who wants to hear about the warehouse? Good. That's great, but I want to tell you about the warehouse. So like I said, welcome to the warehouse. My name is Corey Rush. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the warehouse today. Before I do, I'm going to tell you a brief history about myself. So I started here in the warehouse in 2008, about 10 years ago. When I started, it was as an hourly associate, and I was promoted into a supervisor role. Since that time, I've been supervisor in many different areas throughout the facility, including the warehouse itself, the shipping department, and mechanical assembly that you're going to get to see a little later on. So that's enough about me. Now the warehouse. Right now everyone's standing in the back of the warehouse, but if you look over my shoulder, you're going to see about 30,000 reserve locations that we use to hold and store inventory every single day until there's a need for the active floor. So when I say active floor, what I mean is everything beyond these walls, where you just came from, where your orders are getting processed, picked, and shipped every single day. So how do we bring inventory in the warehouse? Well, we bring inventory in the front of the warehouse, and during peak times, we can actually bring in about 10 merchandise trucks in one day. Now that equals out to about 700,000 units of merchandise that we can receive in just within this facility in one day. Now about 80% of the merchandise that comes in to this facility comes from our Morton Group partners in Chicago, and they produce all of our beauty items. Run on Plus Morton Group. We're going to run to here because they're about two tours in, so make sure you apply for them when you get up there. So, just, just to give you an idea of how many units we've sent out here, we went live here in 2009, so we've, we've actually been active for nine years. Since 2009, we have shipped out over two billion units out of this warehouse, out of this facility. So they've really done a great job. You guys have done a really great job. So round of applause. Yeah. And all two billion of those units were received right here within these, within these doors by our 40 plus warehouse associates. All of our warehouse associates receive inventory daily using an RF gun like the one that I have here. This RF gun is a handheld computer and they use it to scan the individual cases. So if you look around us, you're going to see cases and on those cases are labels. And on that label is a thick barcode. That thick barcode is what we call an LPN. Now, it's not a nurse. So for us, LPN stands for license plate number. That license plate number tells us many different things about the case. It tells us the number of units inside the case. It'll tell us the size and weight of the case. Not only that, it'll tell us the size and weight of each individual unit inside the case. So it tells us many different things. We use all that information to fulfill your orders out the floor. So when I say that, what I mean is we have a computer program here called WMS, a warehouse management system. We use warehouse management system to basically determine a need when your orders are being placed on the conveyor back there to start our cartons here, our inventory in the warehouse is being taken to the active floor before your order even gets there. So the inventory is already there to fulfill that order. Now, we pull inventory three ways. One of those ways is Pete Shidey here. Wave the crowd, Pete. So Pete Shidey is on what we call a stock picker. We use stock pickers to pull individual cases of merchandise. So during peak times, we can pull about 17,000 cases in one week of merchandise. In 2017 alone, we pulled, get this, 400,000 cases of merchandise. 400,000 cases. So they pulled out 400,000 cases. So really good job, Pete. Thank you, Pete. Now, if you look behind us here, we have uh, Keith Palmer. Keith Palmer is what we call a turret truck. We use turret trucks to pull out full pallets of merchandise, like you have here. Some of the inventory we have in this facility moves so quickly, we have to pull it by the pallet instead of the case. This is really important that we have everything fulfilled out there on the active floor. Thank you, Kate. Thank you, Keith. Good job. Finally, whenever a representative orders a full case of product, so just one case of product, instead of sending it to the active floor, what we do is we take that case with our warehouse management system and we take it straight to the shipping department. What this does is it completely streamlines the entire process and allows us to bypass the active floor completely. So basically it gets from the warehouse to the shipping dock in a much quicker fashion. It doesn't bulk down the conveyors that are going to out here. I thank you for your time today. Thank you for coming to Zanesville. I appreciate everything you do. 
Have a good rest of the tour. Thank you. right around 75,000 pieces per day, 39,000 are picked off of dispensers, and 36,000 are picked manually. So we have four picking processes over here. We have uh, dispensers, we have pick the light, we have bulk brochure, and we have full case. Behind me, as you can see, are dispensers. These are the items that are going in just about every single order and in large quantities. This helps keep the area quick and efficient. On your tour, as you continue on your left-hand side, you will see what's called pick the light. There the assembler picks the whatever lights up. This process is described a little bit more in detail in one of your next stations. And then past pick the light on your left-hand side is what's called bulk pick. There the assembler will pick 10 packs of the five fastest moving brochures. And then full case. Full case is basically where the quantity order is the same amount as what the vendors have. So a lot of representatives ask how many brochures are in a full case. Well, it really depends. There's different things such as the weight of the pages, how many pages are in a book. So it'll vary from campaign to campaign and book to book. So to guide you to this point, your order came in from Order Start down into Literature Fast. This whole lane is Literature Fast. It circles back around over to Literature Slow, which is behind you, into a check station. Every item that comes in the door is weighed, and our warehouse management system will add up the weights of everything in that box, and if they don't add up to what it thinks it does, it'll pick it out for further review. Now, based off of representative feedback, we have now in place a cardboard insert into the box to help keep the lit products separate from the non-lit to help keep damages avoided. We do recycle our literature. We recycle items that are damaged or obsolete, we recycle right around 3,000 tons per year. At the end of this aisle and different places throughout the building, you will see what we call carton counters. They are the black signs with the, with the red numbers. I'm a hand talker. <laughs> Those numbers there will tell the employee things for engagement, tells them how many they've done and how many they've left to do. It's a picture of Morton Grove. Morton Grove is about 25 miles north of the city of Chicago, so it's a northern suburb. The facility itself opened in 1956. It actually used to be a drive-in before it became this facility, so cool fact. 
Um, the facility sits on 20 acres of land, and the building itself is 500,000 square feet. So the building you're in today is 600,000 square feet. So just to give it a little perspective on size, Morton Grove is pretty big. Morton Grove has about 190 employees, and we use about 30% temporary labor, agent temporary labor. We use that labor to make some of the gift sets. So if you buy a Mother's Day gift set, a Valentine's gift set, any of these gift sets that were cool gift sets that we're selling, we're making them there in Morton Grove. Morton Grove has 44 production lines, and those lines range from a variety of processes and things that they can make. They can make very simple things like roll-on deodorant and bubble bath that's really easy to make to something pretty complicated like an anew cream. Anew creams are probably one of our most complicated formulas that we sell. So there's a lot of products that go into making that. There's a lot of heating and cooling and just getting the bulk right is a lot of work and even filling it is a lot of work. But that's what we do in Morn Grove. Morn Grove makes about 70% of the items that you see in the brochure. More, more, some of the other items are either contracted out to small vendors or they just come from API. But the majority of the stuff is really coming from our facility. In Morton Grove, we pride ourselves in being agile and being able to really re react to increases in customer demand. So in a perfect world, we, it takes us seven days. So seven, it takes us seven days to get something from nothing to something in the here into the distribution center. So if I have all my raw materials, if I have my bottles, if I have my caps, and I have everything, I can make my bulk, I can fill it, I can package it, and I can ship it. So seven days is pretty, pretty fast. A lot of the time that's in there in the seven days that it's embedded are quality controls and checks and balances that we do throughout the process to ensure that the final product that you get is a quality product. One of the things that we've been focusing on heavily in 2018 is improving the customer experience. So we're taking a look at customer data. So I'm reading customer complaints, return data, the EMI survey, if anybody takes it, I read those comments and I see your feedback. So one of the things that we focused on in 2018 again is bath oil. So we've heard over the years, bath oil leaks, bath oil leaks, bath oil leaks. Trust us, we've been working on it. So hopefully we're finding, we're close to that, we're close to uh, finding that uh, silver thing, or silver lining, if you will. So we've looked at how the bottle is made, like how the vendor blows out the bottle. We've looked at how we stand the bottle onto our filler. We've looked at the filler and how the, the filler fills into the bottle. We've looked at the capper. We've looked at the cap. We've looked at the seal. We've looked at how we seal it. So everything. We've looked at every, every, every step of the process from raw material to filling it to see what we can identify and what changes we can make to improve the, the, the seal on that item. So I'm hopeful that actually within the next two weeks I'm going to test a new cap. So the cap you're going to see is the same, the same thing, but the inside of the cap is going to look different. So we've modified the seal, we've made it bigger, we've made it thicker. It's not going to be that easy tab, it's going to be a different kind of seal. We've made tweaks to how we stand up the bottle, we've made tweaks to how we blow the bottle. We've made a lot of changes, and we're hopeful that you're going to see that impact in your order. One of the other things that we've worked on this year, thank you, thank you, it's a lot of work. One of the things that we've also worked on is perfume skin softener. So, you know, we got the feedback, and I emailed and I reached out to some representatives, and they said the cap's coming off, like literally coming off in the order. So what we did for right now is we put a wafer seal to hold that cap to the jar. What we're working on is putting an induction seal on it so that we stop that from coming off. And what I ask of you today is that when you're filling out a survey, if you call the call center or you're giving any feedback, that you give me as much detail as possible. 
it's tough when I get it leaked, right? Because I don't know what to do with that. It's tough. But if you say that it leaked from the side and the seam broke and the cap came off or there was no seal, I can action on that. There's a code at the bottom of every piece. It has an M and four digits. If you give me that, I can tell you who made it, when they made it, the person who made it. So I can get that much detail and I can investigate those items as much as I can. So with that, I need to wrap it up. So um, to start off, my name is Lindsay Neely. I've been with the company for a little over nine years now. I actually started out on the shipping dock as an associate, where I then went into an inventory control role for a few years. I was then promoted to an area lead over the station lighting area, which is what I'll be talking to um, about with you guys today. And then I was promoted to a supervisor in the station lighting area. So I've been a supervisor for a little over four years. Currently, I am a supervisor over the merchandise control area. So we are responsible for making sure that all of this inventory is in location so that the pickers are able to pick and fulfill every single one of your orders. I'm also a supervisor over the quality assurance area. Unfortunately, you guys will not get to see the quality assurance area, but I will get to talk to you guys a little bit and give you an idea about what we do in that area, okay? So in station lighting, we have three pictolite areas, station lighting A, B, and C. These are very similar to the pictolite areas that you saw in Lit Fast and Lit Slow with Catherine. I'm just gonna go into a little bit more detail about this. This is Sheila, she's picking one of, maybe your curtain at this point. <laughs> so as you can see, when the curtain comes in, it gets the routing label gets scanned. I think Joe went over the routing label with you guys in order to start. So there's a license plate on each routing label and the last four digits of that routing or the license plate is very unique to us. So when that carton comes in, the last four digits of that license plate number is gonna show up on her home screen. She's then gonna verify and make sure that those last four digits match up with the carton to make sure that we're picking the correct items to go into that carton. So then you'll see multiple lights light up. This is indicating what inventory she needs to pick to go into that carton. You will see some of the lights flashing. This is just letting her know, um, hey, I need more than one piece of this item in my box. After she gets everything picked, you will see a light light up on her home screen. If it is a green light, it means that it needs to go to another station. If it is a blue light, this means that it's done with everything and it's gonna go straight to the shipping dock to get shipped directly to you guys. At that point, they're just gonna verify and make sure that all of the items are in there and everything can close and everything will be packed nicely for you guys. So station lighting A and B have 10 mirrored locations. Station lighting C only has four mirrored locations. So those four mirrored locations are with um, inventory that's still moving quickly, but it's not moving as quick as the items that we have in station lighting A and station lighting B. We also have what's called station lighting D. Station lighting D, um, we actually use an RF. It's a radio frequency hand scanner that we use in station lighting B. Station Lighting D has much slower moving items or maybe items that we don't have a whole lot of inventory for. We don't have the shelf space to put as much inventory in those locations. Um, Station Lighting D picks around 7,800 pieces per day, where Station Lighting A, B, and C, we pick about 90,000 pieces per day throughout those three areas. So, so that's a lot of inventory throughout those areas. So once your order has been completely picked in the station lighting area, it'll then head towards the shipping dock. When it's headed towards the shipping dock, there is a scale that your carton's gonna go over. So when your carton in left order starts, it's given a weight that it should weigh after it has all inventory in that carton. If for some reason that weight variance is off, it'll then kick it off into our quality assurance area. At this point, our quality techs will then verify each piece that's in that carton and make any corrections that need to be made to ensure you guys receive all of the correct products. From there, they will then send that off to go to the shipping dock to be delivered to you. We also do what's called random audits, so we'll randomly choose carts to come into the quality area. We'll verify every single piece that's in that, in that carton, and we will also make sure that we are not seeing any damaged product. For example, if there's a brochure that's coming off of a dispenser and we're seeing that it's coming off damage, it gives us the opportunity to give feedback to that supervisor. Hey, we need to change the way that, you know, we're dispensing this item so we make sure it's not getting damaged before it gets to the representative. 
So this is the station lighting area. Next, you will be going to Mechanical Assembly to see Chris. It is his birthday, so make sure you wish him a happy birthday. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it for us. If you want to go ahead and follow your coach to the next station. Anyway, we'll go ahead and get started. So my name's Chris Strauss. Most of you know, today is my birthday. Thank you. Birthday. Thank you so much. I do, I do turn 35 today. Um, so I have, I have been with Avon almost, what, 25% of my life? Been here almost nine years. Um, been here a while. So I started off as an hourly associate uh, in quality. So I went there as a QA tech, kind of verifying orders, make sure everything is accurate. I went from there to an area lead in station lighting, um, which like Lindsay just spoke about. So it was station lighting there. Um, I went to, from that point, that's about a year and a half time frame, and then I went to a supervisor over merchandise control. So super, the merchandise control is the, the associates that hold the inventory to fill the bins to make sure uh, the pickers have something to pick when your order shows up and like kicks off. So I went from there to shipping. Uh, shipping, I did a couple different stints in shipping, um, but basically we do all the full case, so brochures and roll-ons, all that good stuff. So from shipping we do that. Um, I had the closing department in shipping too, so your carton goes through, gets taped up, uh, gets the shipping label on it, and we stack it in the trailer to send to our logistics partners to get delivered out. Um, so the last two years, I've spent here at MAS. So MAS is what, I, what we call it in Zanesville. It, it just stands for Mechanical Assembly. MAS is just nice, short, sweet, to the point. Um, so with Mechanical Assembly, it is made up of four different machines. We have two durable machines, two delicate machines. And it's, the material in each is basically that. So the durable machine holds about a thousand FSCs, such as um, our shower gels, our lotion bottles, our lotion tubes, roll-on deodorants, fragrances, such as like you know, Wild Country, Black Suede, Mesmerize, Far and Away, Amari. All of those are on durable. So delicate is our delicate. So it's all the majority of our makeup and the majority of our uh, jewelry. So we don't we don't have enough locations to hold all of it. So some of the jewelry and makeup will be in station lighting or yeah station lighting um, so with that so they between all four machines combined they do about 100 cartons a minute so it is, it is a fast-paced moving item yet so it's about 650,000 pieces in an eight-hour shift so um, we, we do move some inventory in this department it is very fast-paced it's, it's, it's busy um, so with delicate specifically we have bagging machines for Delicate, so you can kind of see some of that from the video, but the Delicate bag is basically this. So it's, this starts off as a flat piece of uh, plastic, really, cellophane, if you want to call it that, and then, you know, it melts it across the top and the bottom and down the, and down the middle. So it melts it all together, creates a bag. So this is where we start bagging inventory. So the Delicate items only, so not durable, just Delicate. But we start off with two pieces. So if it's two eyeliners or two pieces of jewelry, this is about the same size bag you'll get. So it has a little air in it, create a little product protection. This big guy right here is where we cap out at. So we, we can't bag any more than five liters. The machine just won't do it. So five liters, so this is about 15 pounds worth of merchandise. This is, this is quite the heavy bag. So if your order exceeds that limit, we will put it in its own separate box. So instead of sending four or five boxes to get a little here, a little here, a little here, we'll send one box. So it makes us more efficient here at the facility, and I think it makes you guys more efficient too, so you're not having to search through multiple boxes to find your delicate items. So with that, we have scales at the end of each machine. So as the box goes across the scale, we know what it should weigh with the amount of pieces that's in there. If it weighs too much or too less, we'll send it to our QA department for MAS. We call it air corrections. So it's completely different from quality assurance two separate places um, so with our air corrections um, we'll look at your box and say you know why did it weigh too much why did it weigh too little we'll go through and we'll do 100 percent verification we'll go through and scan every piece in it just to make sure it's the right make sure it's the right amount um, that's one reason we send cartons there the second reason we'll send cartons to air corrections is because the machine told us to so the machine says i'm going to dispense two pieces of wild country fragrance and it thinks it dispensed but it's not quite sure it's second guessing itself so it says you know what go up there and check it too so it'll send the box up there we'll check it just to make sure it dispensed what it said it did the third reason that we'll send a box to air corrections is we call it a maxi jack 
So Max Eject is basically the channel holds 20 pieces. And if your order was 20 pieces, we won't completely empty that channel out. We'll send it there and we'll fill it by hand from cases we'll get out of the warehouse. So it makes us more efficient as well. I was a part of that beauty bash dash. I was part of that, and my team didn't win, but I got $25 credit off my account. So how good is that just for participating? So we're done now, and we're going to be going back on the bus to go back to the convention center. Okay, we just finished our tour. We got our lunch, we got water, and we got a sandwich. And now we're getting on the bus. We are back on the bus now. If you ever had the opportunity to come to Zanesville for the tour, it's very interesting. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Talk to you soon. Bye. We just went to Zanesville for the morning and now we're back. Talk to you soon and thank you so much for watching.